Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Biggie546? This one is going to be Kenny Galladay. KG has been, or I, I'll not say KG, but I'll say the signing of Kenny Galladay has been a disappointment in 2021. That's that's no, that's not a debate. It's not a debate. The production has not been there. He's been injured. For, for whatever reason, he's not been living up to that deal. Uh, part of it is his fault, in my opinion. Part of it is, is the quarterback's fault. Part of it is the team's fault, including Jason Garrett. We'll see how they use him the rest of the season. We'll see if Mike Glennon is the one throwing him the ball the rest of the season. We don't know. So, anyway, Kenny Galladay, we expect a lot more out of Kenny Galladay, no matter whose fault it is. So, this first play is just to show you that I'll highlight him right here. KG lined up on Darius Slay. First off, one of the better corners in the NFL. Darius Slay doesn't get enough credit for being one of the premier corners in the NFL, in my opinion. That's a whole nother story. Uh, as I start to try to get some, you know, as I, as I get some more time and I try to get back into it, maybe I'll be able to do some film sessions on players from other teams, but I'll keep this to Galladay. So this is just to show that Galladay is being treated like a number one receiver. So just watch him run this curl route here. The linebacker comes underneath to take that off. The safety's helping. He's basically bracketed right here. The middle linebacker's there. There's not much for Kenny Galladay to do here. Um, yeah. And even then, he's, you know, maybe sort of open. But at the end of the day, Slay is right there. You got another guy on the inside. You got another guy underneath. He's being treated like a number one receiver. And he basically gets Darius Slayton this first down. I mean, he gifts it to him because no one else, no one's even paying attention to, to Slayton. So that's an easy way to get a first down. This happened with John Ross. This happened a couple of times with Evan Ingram, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we'll, we'll see as we go along. I think I have one in there with Evan Ingram. But Kenny Galladay takes a lot of attention off with other receivers. So he's being respected as that number one guy. Now Galladay right here is just going to just run a regular slant route. Uh, no one gets physical with him at the line. Really easy release. And he just finds a soft spot in his own. Clears a linebacker. DJ puts it on him in stride, in my opinion. Yeah, in stride, pretty much. I mean, if he puts it out a little bit further, the linebacker could hit him. He could drop the ball. So this is pretty much where you will put the ball. Hits him there. Galladay breaks this tackle nine times out of ten. But this was the tenth time, and he cannot keep his feet. And you know he's just he, he's mad about it because I don't think there's anybody. There's nobody back there. So he'd be running for at least about 20, 30 more yards probably. Maybe he takes it all the way, but he doesn't have that, you know, serious long speed. But he'd at least get another 20 yards if he could have kept his feet right there, I definitely believe. So this is Galladay again. He's going to run another curl route. Also, we have to remember that Galladay isn't running the same routes that he ran in Detroit. He was running a lot more deep routes. He's being used as that intermediate target here. Not really. I'm not really a fan of it. I need him running fly routes a lot more, but what can I do? Anyway, Galladay's going to run a curl right here off of this play action. Decent protection for DJ. Galladay's just going to run his route, turn around. DJ trusts him to catch this ball in traffic, and this is a really nice catch in traffic. Low to the ground, uh, exactly where you want the ball. Really nice placement by DJ, and really beautiful catch by Kenny Galladay right there. And that's what he's getting paid for, for these contested catches. But the thing is, he's making these contested catches now for, what, 14 yards instead of 50, 60 yards or 40 yards or even 30 yards. So really nice play right here. But we want to see a lot more of it. So Kenny Galladay is at the top of your screen right here. And I just want, first off, before I start criticizing Daniel Jones and I start criticizing anybody, I just wanted to give Daniel Jones credit right here. Uh, as it relates to his connection with Kenny Galladay. Some people probably said this ball is behind. But off of this play action, Galladay's open. Yes, you want to hit him in stride, but also you got a safety right over the top. DJ does exactly what I believe he should have done, and he puts the ball on his back shoulder, puts the ball on the back shoulder, and that gives Kenny Galladay, if he's able to, I mean, you don't expect it, but if he's able to keep his feet, 
he's got the ability to turn around and run and beat that safety, but he didn't. He, he wasn't able to keep his feet right there. But at the end of the day, this placement of the ball protects Kenny Galladay because if he puts it out in front of him, the safety obliterates Kenny Galladay, and that's a really tough way to protect itself. So before I start saying DJ did this, DJ did that, I will give him credit for putting the ball where Galladay could protect himself. So Galladay is at the top of your screen. We all know this play. Uh, and this is very frustrating to me because DJ could throw these balls all the time to Golden Tate, who was 5'9". But it seems like with Kenny Galladay, he just cannot get on the same page. And he's not able to throw these routes where these 50-50 balls at a very successful rate. I don't get it. Anyway, Galladay gets the one-on-one -on -one covers with Darius Slay, the top of your screen. Everything's perfect. He's one-on-one. -on -one. He's got the height advantage. DJ pulls the trigger. Now, I would say that nine times out of ten, again, just as I said about that run, you would expect Galladay to come down with this ball. But this was the tenth time, and the ball also could have been higher. Galladay has to go through Darius Slate to catch the ball, and he's not able to come down with it. It pretty much bounces off of his head. But if he puts it just a little bit higher, I believe that this is a touchdown. I definitely believe that that will be a touchdown if you put it just a just about a foot higher, or not even a foot higher, just about just about a, a, a hand's length higher. I believe that that's a touchdown. Again, uh, Galladay's at the top of your screen again. It's just another ball placement issue I have with Daniel Jones and the red zone with Galladay. Let's just watch it. The ball is just placed in the wrong spot. You got your guy one-on-one. -on -one. He's got the size advantage. You got him finally off of Darius Slay. Put this on the back shoulder, and this is an easy touchdown. Galladay makes this catch in his sleep. But you throw it up pretty much like how he was supposed to throw it before, and it's just way too high. It's, it's more like you're throwing the ball to the DB than the, the wide receiver. Galladay has to pretty much play defense and swat it away. Really tough catch to make. I mean, he wasn't going to be able to make that catch. If he puts it on the back shoulder, I believe that's a very easy catch for Galladay to make by boxing this guy out and making it. So this play, Galladay is at the bottom of your screen, number 19, right behind. He's lined off of the line of scrimmage, and he's going to run a drag pretty much. DJ is going to hit him, and he's going to drop it. Uh, I kind of blame this on DJ and Galladay. But more on DJ, he waits really, he waits a long time to, to throw the ball. You see someone coming open right here uh, around the 10 yard line. I'm not sure who that is. That might be Evan Ingram. You see someone coming open right there. Uh, he doesn't pull the trigger there and he checks off and he just throws it to Galladay. Galladay kind of like slows down on this route. I guess he's reading the defense and just saying like this is the best place for him to sit in the zone. But either way, uh, late throw on DJ's part, late decision made, and he throws it to Galladay while Galladay has the linebacker breathing down his neck. Still got to make this catch with his reputation of being the contested catch king. Got to catch the ball right there. Yes, the linebacker came and, and broke that play up, but you just got to have the strong hands and catch the ball right there. You got you to gotta make that play. So this by far was my biggest problem with Kenny Galladay in this past game. I did not like it at all. Uh, I was actually in the chat of the Hub and Kid Blue stream. And I, I, was, I was telling him, listen, Galladay gave up on that route. He stopped on that route. Uh, he slowed down on the route. He did not finish it. And as a result of that, he didn't catch that ball. And as we see it right here, all 22, DJ puts the ball where it's supposed to be. And Galladay barely reaches for it, slows down on the route. Let's just watch it in real time. Slows down on the route. He didn't finish it. So I just want to see some more consistent effort from Kenny Galladay when things aren't going his way. I'm not going to call him a drama queen or anything like that. I know people love to, to label wide receivers and label players that when sometimes you don't see 100,000% effort from him. I understand his frustration. He's a, a premier wide receiver in this league, and he's putting up wide receiver three numbers because of the injuries, because of the horrible offense, and sometimes because of the quarterback. So he's just got to just give a more consistent effort. Uh, we've got to do a better job 
letting him go down the field and make those huge plays. And DJ's got to do a better job placing the ball in better spots for Galladay to be able to make these uh, make these contested catches. If that's going to be Mike Glennon, same thing goes for him. He's got to do a good job of that. As we get Kadarius Tony back, as we get some more underneath options, there's no excuse not to send this guy deep and just give him some shots down the field, please. Um, it's been a disappointment, and it's been it's been a lot of different things as I showed in this video, and this is a microcosm of the entire season. But you guys, let me know what you're thinking of Kenny Galladay. I know some people have already turned on him. I'm still a believer. I think at the very least next year, in a different offense, uh, someone who believes in him, maybe a new quarterback, who knows. I believe that next year will be a very good bounce back year for him. So, uh, you guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. If you made it this deep into the video, come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily, and during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So, if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.